Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the March 23rd, 2021 uh, budget workshop and a special city council meeting. Uh, the session will be conducted remotely and council members uh, will only participate electronically. For those viewing online, please ensure that you join this meeting using the following website address, www.lewistonmaine.gov slash 2021cc. If you join this meeting using any other link, we encourage you to rejoin the meeting using the correct website address. Uh, public comment on uh, the workshop items, uh, which is basically our budget presentation over the next several meetings, uh, can be sent to public comment at lewistonmaine.gov prior to or during this meeting and all comments received would be forwarded to the city council. And members of the public who are logged in to the meeting online can make a comment when invited to do so by raising your hand. With that said, uh, I'll turn this over to City Administrator Dote. Evening, uh, Mayor and City Councilors. I'm going to ask uh, Director Hunter to guide us through Recreation, Recreation Activity Fund, and Utilities this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, the City Council. Um, City Administrator Dote. Um, I believe um, Dale's going to bring in the Public Works Director. Um, <clears throat> tonight's workshop um, kind of wraps up all of the divisions that fall underneath the Public Works Department. Um, beginning with recreation on page 66 of your budget book. Um, there were five new program and service requests for the budget uh, for the recreation. One was to hire a recreation specialist. The second request was to hire a part-time recreation community coordinator. And then once um, the pool resumes activity uh, and opens up, the third request was to transfer the remaining aquatics wages to the general fund. And as a reminder, um, prior to the closing due to the pandemic, the general fund was paying $7,500 towards that. The remaining amount would be $19,000. The division also wishes to contract out for needed assessments on, on outreach services and also to do a cost of service and analysis study. So those are the five new program and services. I didn't know if the Public Works Director wanted to elaborate on any of those before I started to get into the details of this year's budget. Yes, I would love to, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I think with the, looking at just briefly going down these with a little bit more detail, the rec specialist for that full-time position was to look at age-friendly programs and every program is gonna be looking at community coordination. So, you know, that's gonna be a part of everyone's job. Um, and so right now we have the, the superintendent, the coordinator and a clerk, but it would be the specialist to really do more programming. The part-time person um, here is listed as a community coordinator, but I'd like to suggest that we look at the environmental pieces that are in solid waste and in stormwater. If we connect all of these together, it could be an environmental specialist. Um, and so that's kind of a, a little twist, but I know we talked about the other two divisions yesterday, so, or last week. Uh, the pool, obviously we know about the pool. A needs assessment is really doing it with a college level professors, which is a very inexpensive way to do this, where we go out and they facilitate the, the focus groups. So the public source would still be doing part of that, but that we're really just farming out the um, objective view and them leading the questions and them leading the focus groups. And then the cost of service analysis is a specialist for rec finances. Okay, Barry Dunn is a very big uh, accounting firm in Portland. And so that's where I kind of went to what's a specialist out there saying about how we put our grants together, our fundraising and all that pricing. So there is a specialty in finance for recreation. It's a little bit different, as you know, different than the utilities, different than our operating. So looking at best practices and really what meets our community. So um, I think that's important as we get kind of a bench line of moving and launching our programs forward. Um, but that's, that's it. If you had any other questions. I'm sorry. Right. Um, Director Hunter, can we put it on the parking lot, the rec specialist and part-time rec commu community coordinator? Certainly. Thank you. 
Councilor Khalid. Thank you. Um, the rec specialist is that. I, I don't see that job description. Where where can I find it? I mean, I saw the part time community coordinator, which I'm still like have some questions about. Um, it was just unclear to me what the roles and responsibilities would be for that position. But um, director, as you said, he may be put in as the environmental specialist. Can you just explain to me? Sure. Your idea? Yeah. No, absolutely. We haven't done a full job description for either of these, but to go a little bit deeper, we looked at Auburn's um, layout to how they did aid friendly programming and looking at that as a specialty area for, you know, we're talking probably age 40 to 80, you know, so a very variety of programs and really kind of working with the senior center so that we have a partnership there that's coming together. So that was a focus that I heard, you know, that was a concern from residents and from the council. So I kind of put that focus around age friendly. And then as we've evolved today, and you know, the last workshop that we had, there's been a lot of good support around environmental education. And some of that can be paid for through the stormwater budget. Some of it can be paid for through the solid waste budget. And if you put all of those together, I think that we can do it all through REC as a, as a one specialist on environmental. So they'd be doing education programs with kids as well as some sustainability stuff. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. So I can work on um, the detailed job descriptions too. Yeah, um, for the needs assessment slash outreach, I mean, when it comes to community outreach, I am a big fan of that and very, um, you know, an advocate for that area. But I'm just wondering for the groups who participate in this um, potential folks, would they be like the participants, would it be, especially youth, would they be getting a, some sort of a stipend? Is that what the 10,000 is for? Because if it's not, then, I would definitely encourage, you know, for the participants, especially, you know, youth who do participate in the, in, the, in this effort to get some sort of compensation for their efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the details on that 10,000 is, it is very low. It's the professor's time and them putting the reports together and them up here facilitating. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what the dollars and cents are that some of that couldn't get worked out especially if they want to act as a facilitator and not, you know, just a participant, but really kind of train them to be facilitators, which would be great because we do need to do this ongoing. It isn't doing it once. It's that, you know, we're going to be doing it ongoing, but to get a benchmark. Does that mind you guys? Something squealing. Councilor Khalid, so we, the last little statements you made, we didn't hear at all. Can you just turn your mic on again and test it? Oh, you didn't hear anything that I said? No, we did, except for the very end. We could, I could see your mouth moving, but we couldn't hear you. So oh, I, I thought that squeaking was, was me. Never mind. All right, yeah, I'm you. all set. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Heather. Um, before we go on, just as a kind of a side note and for information purposes, um, the new program and services that you see for the part-time community coordinator and the two environmental positions, those were truly costed out assuming part-time employees. So no fringe has been added to those. If we consolidate that position, we are going to need to add fringe benefits to that, just to be clear. On that note, we will talk about recreation administration. And again, the budget begins on page 66. The overall increase here um, results in 70, an increase of $76,337 or 31.4%. Um, looking at the administrative uh, administration budget, that had an increase of $60,237 or 50, just about 50%. Um, all of that is in personal services at 59,000. That is re-adding back or adding back the unfrozen position of the program coordinator. Um, we had a small increase there of contractual services in the telephone account. Um, that is impacted by the rehiring or re unfreezing of that position. That position gets a cell phone stipend as well as the proration of cost of, of phone service for the armory. 
and we had a small increase uh, in uh, fixed cost of uh, just under $200 to upgrade their National Recreation and Park Association to the premier level, which offers um, some discounts on training. And, and as the director referenced, um, support and, and insight to best practices in recreation. The armory on that same page rose by $16,146 or 14%. All of that increase is found in contractual services, and it is made up of utilities rising by about $2,200, repairs to equipment for $7,225, and that represents the new full year on the HVAC preventive maintenance coverage that um, most of the municipal buildings are falling under now. And then we had a $6,200 increase in repairs to buildings, for their painting program and pest management. The senior citizens budget is flat or has a small decrease um, of $46. As in the past, uh, um, looking at beginning on page 68, the recreation programs that we have been talking about uh, fall under a special revenue fund. So any changes or any discussion on these next couple pages does not impact the tax rate whatsoever. It's a special revenue fund. Um, activities and programs offered are designed to, after the first couple of years, either be vetted out or be self-supporting at that point in time. Um, and most, when you look down through there, positive amounts so show the surplus or that the program is self-supporting and producing a surplus. Um, and as we talked about at this point, we are not considering opening up the pool this summer or the aquatics program. So those temporary wages are not budgeted. We are looking at, however, depending on how the rollout and, and opening up of services um, continues looking at using the splash pads and other water features and then bringing the pool online, you know, perhaps next budget cycle. So looking down through there, you will see um, a series of programs and given the fact that there's been significant turnover in this department, um, the director and I kind of went through this budget to become familiar with it and looked at the programs that tended to have high registrations and produce surpluses. So those are the um, components that you will see outlined. You will see some programs that are essentially frozen for this year until we see how enrollment goes and, and getting um, administrative staffing up and running for those opportunities. So if you look at the first category, what's kind of the general and events category, that covers fundraising. It also covers like administrative costs for the time track system that is used by all of the funds. That had an overall deficit increase of about $4,300. And that's combined with a decrease in interest revenue um, given the first, uh, the current rate environment of $1,500. And then we had miscellaneous services increased by $2,600, again, for that rec online um, desk service that includes the automatic online enrollment and registration, as well as tracks their um, roster system and their personal services, their temporary wages and the time clock system for the recreation. Day camp had an overall surplus of about $344. Um, we had projected revenues increase by 36,800 based upon anticipated demand and early registration and the incentive to provide um, an early registration discount. That was offset by increases in wages due to the minimum wage as well as anticipated attendance and making sure there was enough day camp monitors um, to supervise the program. We now have field trip trips that are budgeted separately. So you will see that has 
um, and co a cost of about $9,100 or $9,200. And that also includes the cost of busing. Volleyball had an overall surplus, but it decreased this year by $520, $22. Um, revenues are projected to be fat, flat, and we had a small increase in salaries and wages due to referee services. Track, field, and cross country at this point is a frozen program, as well as tennis. Moving on to page 69, we have an overall surplus increase in the soccer program of just under $2,500. We're assuming that the revenues are going to be projected to be relatively flat, and we have a decrease in miscellaneous services of $2,500. And that was a result of moving the registration software to the administration and um, limited field maintenance that is needed in the upcoming fiscal year. The Lego Robotics, which is also part of the Open Gym, right now is a frozen program. We anticipate having lacrosse have an overall surf a surplus increase of $424. Again, you'll notice the theme, a flat revenue estimate along with the increase in temporary wages of about $2,100, $2,200, um, and a decrease in miscellaneous services, uh, again, for that field maintenance and registration software. Field hockey had an overall surplus increase of $136, and that was all dedicated to a decrease in field maintenance estimates. Basketball had an overall surplus decrease of $1,050 or so, and that was due to increase in temporary wages of $3,446, offset by the decrease in miscellaneous services for that software. Baseball had an overall decrease of $136, um, and that was based upon the temporary wage increases that are gonna be experienced by all the programs due to minimum wage and so forth. Cheering had an overall surplus decrease of $2,040. We had a decrease in projected revenues of about 4,000, but that was tempered by a decrease in the miscellaneous services of about $2,000. And the rest of the programs noted on page um, 70 and continuing to page 71 have all been frozen for FY22. Or they have no real fluctuations as in the case of pickleball. <laughs> Is that it with your presentation? Yes. Okay, thank you, Councilor Reif. I know you said this, but I just want to put it in terms I understand. So the frozen programs for rec are the ones with the lowest participation? Or they had a deficit. They or were they had generating deficit. enough uh, revenue to, to cover the cost. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? Council, uh please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so for example, since the pool is gonna be closed this summer, I think Open Gym is such an important um, program and activity for our community members. So how can we reopen that or encourage more community members to, you know, um, use the gym? Like I remember a lot of the youth that I know personally have reached out to me. Um, Dennis knows the history of like doing um, an open gym, um, even with the past um, superintendent of, of the rec department. And we were like talking about some applications and like different processes, but the need is there. So how can we support the youth of the city to encourage them to, you know, use this? And yeah, that's the question for the director or hunter. Yeah, the, the one thing I would check and, and the director can jump in too is 
will the if you have the day camp, will the gym be available for the open gym, or will you have to revert to the evenings? Because I think that's one of the things that we talked about. I'd like to say that my understanding was the ones that went flat weren't necessary frozen is that you develop a budget for whatever program you want to run and see if it's feasible. So you can still do new programs. You would just run a budget first. So as with like with open gym, there's money and miscellaneous services to offer some pieces at no fee that's under miscellaneous services. But for a new program, we're going to have lots of new programs. They're not listed here because we don't even know what they are yet. But as long as I have a budget and present that to Heather about before we register for it, is that that's a program that can be added. Is that correct, Heather? Yes, and, and council, when you approve the budget order, um, part of the budget order includes the appropriation for the rec activity funds. One of the whereas paragraphs specifically outlines that new recreation programs can be um, pursued on an experimental basis, if you will, um, as long as there is the budget outline and so forth. So there is that flexibility when you approve um, the rec budget and the overall city budget. And you should see that paragraph within the order. And something as simple as an open gym or a new program is all in that category. Um, so yeah, we want to be using our gym and we want to be using the school gyms. Yeah. Yeah. The school gyms are not being used a lot. I think a lot of the attention is put onto the armory. And when the, the youth of the city want to, you know, use the armory, they have to sign and, you know, go through loopholes, but then we have our school gyms open and not being used that much. So it's not, limited facilities it's how can we be you know um i don't know just think outside the box so basically circle back when we approve the city administrator dota so I, i'd actually like to just speak quickly to that councilor khalid um we've actually been having the exact conversations that you just mentioned um with the school department um with members of the community about opening up those gyms and how we can partner with the school um, to find better ways to not only get access to those gyms, but to do exactly what you're talking about, which is an open gym at our armory facility and, and really just um, meeting those needs. So those conversations are, uh, I would say, absolutely in the works. There's good planning, I think, occurring at this point. Um, so as uh, Director Brenchik and uh, Director Hunter both have, have spoken to, I think that we'll have the opportunity to add those types of uh, uh, programs and the work is already started. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to, uh, as we move forward with the, um, um, the, the filling of the superintendent position um, and uh, kind of working through all of that, we'll be updating you as that kind of progresses with some of these new programs and, and, and opportunities. But that has absolutely uh, been a big conversation um, and, and we're there with you. And we'll, we'll certainly have something I hope to uh, report out soon. Awesome. Thank you. And let me know how I can, um, you know, be part of those conversations. Absolutely. Yep. So are you expecting, are there going to be uh, MOUs with the school department on the gyms? And, and so I, you know, I was part of those conversations at the very beginning. Uh, and really committee member of physics kind of brought it to us as a possibility. I think it, that's kind of how it started. Uh, but that was, you know, that's been several months. So when do you think we'll wrap up those discussions with the schools and actually get these gyms in, in, in the youth's hands? So I don't have a specific timeline, I think, at this point. I mean, I think, um, and I guess is to answer the question on MOUs, I don't, I don't know exactly what the relationship will be, whether or not an MOU is required. But certainly, if an MOU is required, then we would have some type of uh, agreement uh, and understanding of that. So I just think it's too early to be able to report out a timeline or what the structure or what this will look like. Um, but I do know that, uh, again, you know, the, the conversations have been ongoing. Um, it's not focused solely on this. I, you are correct, Mayor. We started with some, you know, conversations around that, but the conversations have expanded and grown significantly um, just around, you know, what this partnership looks like. So beyond just gym access and open gym, I think it's just really trying to, um, you know, work through all that and, and, and building a stronger relationship is also part of, um, you know, this process. So, again, um, 
you know, Director Brenchik's been guiding those conversations, and I think they've been good and productive up to this point. We're just, um, just I guess, not ready to report on what, how this is all going to come together just yet. Um, I think that work is in progress. And and, and Director Brenchik, want to add something to that if there's anything I'm missing? Yeah, we've been we have meetings every couple of weeks because we're talking about sports and spectators and COVID restrictions and things like that. And I know in our last conversation, the superintendent had said they're not letting anyone else into the school facilities, but they would waive that for municipal partnerships. So we're looking at, you know, the second half of the days for the summer, as well as Longley being a program that some of our programs running in our place could go there. Um, so I think it's it's an open door and with the middle school right beside us for the summer is where we had permission to use their theater and their stage because I understand they have a beautiful stage. So that's part of our summer camp program now. So I think, you know, the doors are opening is trying it. How do you do building maintenance? You know, do you need another monitor type there assisting? Um, so I think we've already tied them into the summer camp and, you know, working around their half days that they're planning for 100 kids in every school. Um, so that we're, we're starting to open that door and, and figure out what, what we need to do for building monitoring and stuff like that. All right, thank you. I think this sounds really exciting. I can't wait to see the end product. And I know you put a lot of work into it. And I know the superintendents put a lot of work into it. So much appreciated. Okay, any other questions from the council in reference to recreation or comments? If not, I'm just going to turn to the attendees in case there's anyone from the public that would like to comment about recreation within the city. And I'm not seeing any raised hands and I'm not sure if most of them, no, there's a couple of uh, possible spectators. So anyone who'd like to comment on recreation, just please raise your hand. Did we want to give any news out? Okay. I don't think you can say that. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, Director uh, Hunter. Thank you. Um, moving on to water, which is the first enterprise fund. Um, the pro forma is found on page 80 of your budget book. So just as a reminder, kind of flashing back to the city administrator's presentation of the FY22 budget, um, revenues are flat prior to the proposed rate increase. And because uh, expenses are increasing by $887,000 um, or about 16%, it was producing an overall operating deficit. Um, because of that, and because of the absence of a cash balance to bring forward, um, we are recommending a 23% rate increase for water. And um, as a reminder, I, I believe the mayor had asked before, as far as the level of review of the enterprise funds, um, I go through every line item of every budget, unfortunately or fortunately, and ask questions and you know look for relationships and, and that type of thing. So the bigger, the biggest issues that have impacted all of the utility funds, you might recall when we essentially tried to reduce all, you know, forego any rate increases last year and and hold the line. Um, a lot of the capital items that were scheduled to be purchased and funded last year um, were frozen. So a lot of the impacts on this year's budget for all three utilities takes into consideration we're, at, we're adding back capital purchases, as well as the normal operating increases with personal services and fringe and so forth. So that's what you're seeing, you know, the major cost drivers here. So looking on the pro forma on page 80, you see the same categories down under the expenditures that we've been talking about with all the other general fund departments. So the first one is personal services. We had an increase of $125,000 there, um, $119,000 or just under $120,000 relates to regular time. Um, that includes the normal steps and colas that we found on general fund. It includes an increase in temporary wages of just under $23,000. Um, again, for all utilities, the temporary wages were also frozen.
for the current year budget. And that was all offset by a decrease of overtime of $17,500. Fringe benefits rose by about $4,000, and that reflects the increase in Maine State retirement that we spoke about with general fund of $3,400. We had an increase of $9,600 in FICA and Medicare tax due to higher wages, but the, there was a decrease in health insurance based upon the actual health insurance adjustments came in well under budget. So that decrease essentially canceled out the increase in the FICA and Medicare. Debt service rose by $24,600 and that's based upon the bond sale that was recently sold. Capital outlay and I will kind of refer you back to page 79 and you will see the capital outlay for all of the funds listed here. So you will see not only the water operating and the sewer and stormwater operating, but you will also see their capital improvement or their LCIP requests. So in this particular case, water has the uh, meter replacement program that is also partially reimbursed by the sewer fund. We have an SUV sampling vehicle that is being replaced. We are looking at installing an automatic um, generator at the Montalo Reservoir. We are expanding the radio reads and flex devices. We are looking at continuing with the mixers on Ferry Road. We have scheduled cameras and lock security systems and upgrades that, that would be in conjunction with the city hall project that is in the LCIP. And then we are looking at um, improvements to the dark fiber hardware for the SCADA and interconnection nodes. Questions on any of the capital items before I move on to the operating cost? Okay, so flipping back through there on page 81, you kind of start seeing the divisions that I'm going to be talking about with the operating co costs. The first one is the source of supplies, supply, excuse me. That had an increase of just under $28,000. We had increases in materials and supplies due not only to price increases, but also um, supplies needed for the UV and the chloramine treatment. Chlorine equipment and sensors also need to be acquired for about $4,500. And we are replacing um, one of the variable frequency drives for $6,000. In the next division, which is the water treatment division, that rose by $10,000. And that is all in the contribution to the Lake Auburn watershed Protection Commission. On the bottom of page 81 and continuing to page 82, we have the actual distribution cost. That budget rose by $21,295 and it includes a smattering of increases. Um, we had some in-service training increases for $1,800. Material supplies that rose by $15,000 for distribution materials. Rental equipment rose by $6,000 and that's for trucks and trailers and so forth for the mowing and flushing crews um, for the temporary wage um, workers that are hired. And we had that was offset by decreasing in paving needs. The customer accounts, which is the next division, um, is pretty much split between water, sewer, and storm water. One third, one third, one third. So um, any variations in this particular uh, division will be the same or con consistent through all three utilities. So we had an increase here of 
$53. And the bulk of that or half of that increase um, is in maintenance and licensing, $11,444 for um, both the Beehive and the Munis software packages that the utility use, utilizes. Postage also rose by $1,900 due to increases in delinquent notices and certified mailings. And again, that's a consistent item that has impacted all three utilities. Contractual services um, collection represents cross-charged wages that came from the general fund of about $2,700. And then contractual services, other rose by the same $2,700, and that's for increased internet tablet connectivity and communications. The next division is the administrative division on page 82 and 83. That had an increase of just under $9,900. That includes contractual services for accounting Again, that's counting oversight provided by particularly the auditing and accounting office. We also had increased uh, contractual services for the public works administrative office. There's the cost sharing from general fund that's charged there of $5,600. Materials and supplies rose by the purchase of a computer and as we are anticipating a rate increase, um, we've budgeted $2,500 for rate case um, expenses in order to effectuate that change. So that's pretty much the water utility fund, unless somebody has some questions. Councilor Wright. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to refresh myself on when we're talking about the water and the rate increase, the water fee applies to all properties in Lewiston. Is that correct? That's correct. So like nonprofits are taking part of this share. So it's not as much of a burden. Right. And, and uh, we are looking at covering fire on Thursday. You will see our own fire department reaps the burden of this rate increase as well because of the hydrant rental fees. Right, right. I remember that from past years. Okay, I was just trying to understand how this might impact constituents, but also businesses and nonprofits. Okay, so th this is a more equitable share. Most definitely. Any other questions or comments from the council? Right. Recognizing that, you know, the presentation sometimes don't always generate questions, but as the budget process moves on and uh, we look at additions or subtractions, that, that typically is when uh, more uh, pointed questions will come out in specific areas. I do want to allow any public, uh, any of the public who'd like to comment on utilities and the proposed rate increase in the water. Okay, not seeing any, I'll bring it back to the council. Any final thoughts on this evening's budget presentation? Anything we would like uh, Director Hunter to- uh, Are we doing the other utilities or just water? All of them. All of them. Tonight. Okay. Are we all set? Yep. Okay. So sewer is the next utility on page 86. And in spite of its $34,000 decrease in revenues um, and the increase of $160,000 worth of expenses, um, in spite of that operating deficit, there's enough carry forward cash to absorb that deficit without needing a rate increase. So sewer will not have a rate increase for this year. Again, kind of approaching it the same way. Um, if you look at payroll, that had an increase of $5,600. We actually had a drop in regular wages of about $2,600 due to attrition and turnover. 
That was tempered by increases in both overtime of $2,400 and temporary wages of about uh, $5,900. French benefits rose by $4,200, reflecting the increases that we saw in other um, budgets of Maine State Retirement. In this particular case, based upon um, what new employees elected for health insurance coverage, we actually had an increase in health insurance coverage on the sewer fund. Debt service rose slightly by $17,236. And after last year's budget and the impact on the treatment plant, I'm pleased to say there's a decrease in the Water Pollution Control Authority apportionment of $126,858. And again, Lewiston runs about 65% of the um, apportionment charge for the treatment plant. And back on page 79, you might want to stick a pen in there or something because we have to flip back one more time. <laughs> so you'll see sewer in the middle of the page, capital outlay requested from the operating budget, includes the replacement of a three quarter ton pickup truck with a cap. The generator at the Montello Reservoir the mobile trailer um, that calls the generator around, replacing that, and then replacing a CSO or a, a permanent metering um, for CSO purposes. So those are the four capital items that are requested for appropriation in this fiscal year. So kind of jumping back to page 87. We'll look at the operating expenses now. And the operating expenses rose by $133,458 or about 21%. So under the pump station, which is the first division under on page 87, that had an increase of 60, about $6,300. So the decrease in contractual service management for a thousand, um, and again, that's based upon time charged from general fund, helped balance out the increase in the hazmat cost and materials of supplies of about $6,500. And that's the pump maintenance as well as the um, variable frequency drives that we are looking at, or they are looking at replacing. We already discussed the treatment plant and its decrease. So looking at the transmission operations, that had an overall increase of $114,700. And again, you had some fluctuations in the contractual services other of $96,000. That reflects the sewage share of the meters and the radio reads that reimburses water. Because we didn't do a lot of that activity last year, there was not a charge to sewer for that activity. This year, now that we're going back for meter replacements, obviously sewer needs to play its fair share for that. Other supplies and materials rose by $14,000. Um, we have an MDOT project that requires a, a significant number of manhole frames and covers that represents that $14,000 increase. And then as with water, we have some rental of equipments for the uh, temporary workers of $4,500. On the next page, we'll have the customer service accounts. And again, some similarities there, rose by $7,000. We had the maintenance and licensing increase. In this particular case, it impacted um, sewer by about $1,600. 
postage for those delinquent and certified mailings of about $1,500 and the billing from general fund for collections rose by $3,200. The admin portion of the budget rose by $5,466. And again, we had some offsetting increases and decreases. So the accounting fell by about $1,900. And that also had a reduction of insurance premiums of about the same $1,900, which compensated the increases in contractual services for the public works admin of $5,600 and materials and su supplies of $2,700 for computer replacements. So again, the sewer fund has no projected rate increase for FY22. And Mr. Mayor, I'm all set with sewer and if you wanna ask questions. Uh, the council, if they have any questions in sewer, or we can, yeah. Any questions or comments? All right, and let's just move on to the next one and then I'll, uh, I'll check with the public at the end of the next one. Okay, certainly. So the last utility is stormwater. And that starts on page 91. And in this particular case, um, revenues are flat. We had an increase of overall expenditures of $368,000 or 11.4%. And similar to sewer, we had enough cash on hand to be um, brought forward to offset the operating deficit. So we are not recommending a rate increase for stormwater. So water is the only one that is scheduled for a proposed rate increase at this point. Looking at the pro forma on page 91, you will note personal services decreased by $24,654. Um, there were no full-time positions charged. It's all cross-charging with the general fund and the other utilities. So you have no direct employees related to the stormwater fund. So any variation in regular time is variation with the cross-charging. Having said that, we did have a decrease in um, overtime and we had an increase in temporary wages of $15,900. Fringe benefits also decreased based upon wages decreasing, the associated fringe benefits will also decrease. And they fell by $10,700. And again, it's coupled with Maine State Retirement falling by $2,000, um, Social Security and Medicare by about $2,500, and health insurance by about $1,900. Debt service for the stormwater fund also decreased by about $20,453. And looking on capital outlay, so we're flipping back to page 79 again, you will see that rose by $397,500. And projects here reflect the storm drains related to the road rehabilitation project scheduled for this year of a half a million dollars. Any emergency catch basin repairs. And the MS4 permit consulting fees, as well as a CSO um, permanent metering. Looking at, looking at the operating accounts that begin on page 92. Planning and permitting rose by $13,360. And that in, reflects increased engineering services from general fund of $6,200 and rental equipment of $6,800, 
from the municipal garage and the trucks and so forth for some the summer interns. We had a negligible increase in the storage and retention of $875. The collection system operation rose by $1,900. And we had some offsetting adjustments there of decrease in engineering requirements and rental equipments from the uh, municipal garage, as well as materials and supplies rose in that department. Customer service, as we saw with water and sewer, that rose by $10,070. We had an increase of postage for mailing and, and the delinquency notices and certified mail. The increase in contractual services for collection and F, uh, executive totaled $5,800. And again, those are charges from general fund that are charged directly to the stormwater. And then other insurances rose by $4,500, reflecting the, the proper apportionment to the stormwater fund for those. The utility funds did have some new programs and services this year. So looking at all of three funds, because most of those requests were allocated amongst all three funds, we had a request for an asset management technician, a request for two additional beehive modules, one for data warehousing and one for infrastructure recording. There's a request to purchase a drone and all associated costs with that. There's also a request for a rate modeling program the part-time environmental um, position that we've been talking about. And looking at uh, the census customer portal, portal with analytics software and the licensing associated with that. So those represent the um, new programs and services for water, sewer, and stormwater. Okay, any questions or comments from the council? That's all right. Thank you, I forgot digital. Um, so the asset management technician I see listed in three lines at about 30K each. So is it 91 overall? Yes. Okay, I'd like to put that in the parking lot. And then I just wanted to ask about the Beehive Data Warehouse. Uh, is that a one-time cost or? You would pay with most softwares, you pay a one-time cost for the software and then it requires um, annual maintenance and licensing after that. And so that would be a decreased cost after this first year? That's correct. Okay, and the total for that is 21,000? Yes. Okay, I would like to put that on too. Anything else, Councilor? Any other questions or comments from the council? The uh, so we we have a drone in one other department, and and now we're looking at a utility drone. Are there other drones in the budget or in any other departments? No, it, um, the drone is in the police department right now, and that is pretty much a dedicated public safety drone. Um, the request for this drone, it is uh, primarily used for the utilities, particularly to fly over um, different various lots, landscaping and so forth, um, where it might not be possible to walk in and effectively get the same data. Um, it can be borrowed with by other departments as well. Code enforcement could use it. I know MIS has talked about it, if there's some GIS needs as well. So this would kind of be, um, even though it's located in the utilities as a primary, it would be available to um, function in other municipal departments as needed. Okay, good. And that's kind of where I was leaning that, you know, 
it, we may want to consider having one that services several departments. And I understand public safety, police and fire may be different, of course. Uh, and how many people will we train on that? Um, that would be up to the departments. Um, I would think there would be at least two to three employees, if not more. Um, currently, we do have one qualified employee in code enforcement right now that has already got his credentials um, personally. So he, he is up and running, and then we would look at training other employees after that. All right. Thank you. Any other, uh, Councilor Khalid? Um, thank you, Mayor. Just quickly, can you tell me um, how would the customer portal for meters work? I just can't. The analytics that we talked about? Yes. Um, my understanding, and the director can jump in at any point in time, my understanding is currently right now when you log into the city's website, you are able to pay your water, sewer, and stormwater bill and not a whole lot of anything else. The analytics actually by meter or by um, account number would furnish you the information of how much water you're using, whether it's increasing, kind of what period of time it rose. It would indicate if you are experiencing a leak somewhere or a running toilet um, and kind of um, troubleshoot some of those areas that um, the customers usually call into the department and, and kind of troubleshoot that way. Mm, I would so, like to put that, that on the okay. parking lot, yeah, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments reference to the exciting subject of sewer? Yes, <laughs> And then we'll quickly go to the public because I'm sure there's public comments in reference to sewer. All right, I don't see uh, anyone in the public. Uh, so thank you, uh, Heather and Director Brunchuk. Uh, good job this evening. Thank you. All right. Director, did you have, Marianne, did you have a, a question or a comment? I was just gonna add that we had three trained drone pilots in public works. And okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, I apologize if I missed you. Yes, yeah, I didn't raise the right <laughs> hand. I raised my real okay. hand instead of okay. the <laughs> All right. So that concludes the uh, budget workshop. And now I will entertain a motion to, in to enter into executive session persuading to MS MRSA Title I, Section 405-6-A uh, to discuss a personnel matter. Um, so moved. So moved by uh, Councillor Khalid, and I believe that was seconded by Councillor Clement. Sure enough. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, good. All right, uh, call the roll. That's you, Dennis. <laughs> Are you trying to get to the mute uh, button. Councillor from Ward One. Yes. Councillor from Ward Two. Yes. Councillor from Ward Three. Yes. Councillor from Ward Four. Yes. Councilor from Ward 5? Yes. Councilor from Ward 6? Yes. And Councilor from Ward 7? Motion passes 7-0. All right. Thank you. And we'll see you over to the next meeting.